I look at this baseball card and where I want to begin is the good stuff because that's always the fun part. I look at this card and I'm reminded of growing up with a dream to become a Major League Baseball player. I wanted to pitch in the big leagues as an eight-year-old kid. Did I know I'd be able to play there? No. But I had a dream. I progressed through the amateur ranks of baseball, found myself in high school where I was playing in my senior year and things were going fairly well and all of a sudden the coach came up to me and said, Dave, I really do believe you have a chance to play at the next level. Dave Dravecki, the famous pitcher for the San Francisco Giants, a 21st round draft pick who fought his way up the ranks to national stardom. Growing up, I had two heroes, Sandy Koufax and Vita Blue. They were left-handed pitchers. All I cared about as a little kid was I wanted to throw a baseball like they did. I would have to say he was a tremendous competitor. He had this tremendous desire to win. Folks, when I look at this card, it reminds me of seeing the first leg of my dream become a reality. At the zenith of his amazing Major League Odyssey, Dave's doctors noticed a strange lump forming. Finally, they said, okay, let's just get it checked. And so we went to the doctor and, and had an MRI. It was cancer in his left arm, his pitching arm. The doctors looked at me and said, Dave, outside of a miracle, you will never pitch again. And all of a sudden, I had a challenge in front of me. Would I come back, try and make a comeback or not? And folks, I have to tell you, as I said earlier, I'm not a quitter. But the challenge is the key here. And so here I was with this challenge. Would I come back and pitch? And I could not stand there and tell the doctor, well, okay, I'm going to pay attention to what you're saying. It's a miracle that it would be a miracle if I came back, so I'm not going to try. The odds are against me. Why even try? No. For the next 10 months, I went on a journey. I hit walls. I was up and down through that process. But on August 10th, 1989, I made the comeback against the Cincinnati Reds. You don't ever use the word finish when you talk about Dave Dravecki because he never finished. The magnitude of that night is unreal. It was like a more, more like a World Series game, the seventh game in the World Series. And he got a stand ovation when he walked down by the bullpen when he first started warming up. He got a stand ovation when he finished. He got a stand ovation when he went to the mound. It was just incredible to sit there. I didn't really manage that game. I just sat there in awe. Dave returned to the mound to pitch eight electrifying innings for the Giants, leading them to victory. But then, five days later, on the mound against Montreal, Dave Dravecki threw the pitch heard round the world. The sixth inning, and I'm back out on the mound, and you know I rear back to throw a fastball to Tim Raines, who's at the plate. And all of a sudden, as I let go of that pitch, my left arm snaps in half. Here's the pitch, and Dravecki falls over. This incredible explosion in my left ear from releasing that fastball and my arm snapping in half. I went falling to the ground, almost went in shock. There was something going on in my life that was a whole lot bigger than baseball. So much bigger than baseball. Trebecki stumbled on the mound. He threw a wild pitch. Hank, he's holding his shoulder. His left arm shattered, along with his dreams of a major league comeback. The man with the miracle arm must now face the future as an amputee. Baseball was just a stepping stone to something much greater. And folks, the significance of this baseball card is that this is the day that I actually threw that pitch, that first pitch and then 92 pitches afterwards. This is a picture of the comeback game. That is why this card is so special to me. Because when the doctors said outside of a miracle I would never pitch, I was pitching again. Five days later, as you saw in the video, I threw a pitch that in essence was hurt around the world and my left arm snapped in half and my career was over. There's a huge question in relationship to all of this. You know, we, we understand society tells us that our worth is defined by what we have, how much we have in the back pocket, how much we possess in relationship to a homes, cars, other luxury items, whatever it might be, or what we don't possess. Some people feel like they're worth a lot, others feel worthless. 
But I'm here to challenge you with a very important question. How do we define our true worth? Because when we get to the answer of that, I believe it's going to impact everything that you do, not just in this company, but in your lives personally and in the pe with the people you relate to every day. And with that, I looked at myself and I asked the question, if my baseball card now looks like this, does Dave Dravecki still have worth? If my baseball card looks like this, because folks, as I laid in that bed, that's exactly what I felt, as if I had no worth because my card now looked like this. And through the process of pain and suffering, I have come to realize that I have worth beyond my comprehension. And it's not because of what I do, it's because of who I am. Let me say that again. Your worth is not in, who, in what you do. Your worth is not in what you do, it's in who you are. And I've come to learn that who I am revolves around all the relationships of my life. I'm here to suggest to you that the people that you work with are more important to you than the success you have with the product that you provide. And so I think if there's, if there's anything to be learned in that from the baseball field, it's realizing just how important this team is to the overall success of the ball club. I love fishing. Happened to be in a sporting goods store, walked into the fish and tackle department, I've got this newfound love, and so all of a sudden, I decide look to, uh, to figure out how in the world I'm gonna do this. So anyway, here I am in this store, and I walk up to the counter, and all of a sudden, out from behind the counter comes this young man, and he gives me the strangest look. Well, you know what his next question was? Have you ever caught any fish? <laughs> well, you don't know how pleased I was to announce to him that I had just returned from Alaska, where I caught a red salmon this big. <laughs> When I look um, over the past several years, back over the past several years of my life, and I see all that I've learned from other people who have suffered, all I've experienced of other people's love, all God has shown me of his mercy and comfort, and all the encouragement my small measuring of suffering has given to others, I think to myself, if I'd have continued on as a baseball player and missed that, now that would have been the tragedy.